Hey class two, we're carrying on with reading some Matilda. Daddy, she said, do you think you could buy me a book? A book, he said. What do you want a flaming book for? To read, Daddy. What's wrong with the TV, for heaven's sake? You've got a lovely telly with a 12 inch screen and now you come asking me for a book? You're getting spoiled, my girl. Nearly every weekday afternoon, Matilda was left alone in her house. Her brother, who was five years older than her, went to school. Her father went to work and her mother went out playing bingo in a town eight miles away. Mrs Wormwood was hooked on bingo and she played it five afternoons a week. On the afternoon of the day when her father had refused to buy her a book, Matilda set out all by herself to walk to the public library in the village. When she arrived, she introduced herself to the librarian, Mrs Phelps. She asked if she might sit a while and read a book. Mrs Phelps, who was silently taken aback at the arrival of such a tiny girl who was unaccompanied by her parent, nevertheless told her that she was very welcome. Where are the children's books, please? Matilda asked. They're just over there on the lower shelves, Mrs Phelps told her. Would you like me to help you find a nice one with lots of pictures in it? No, thank you, Matilda said. I'm sure I can manage. And from then on, every afternoon, as soon as her mother had left for bingo, Matilda would toddle down to the library. The walk took her only about ten minutes, and this allowed her two glorious hours sitting quietly by herself in a cosy corner, devouring one book after another. When she'd read every single children's book in the place, she started wandering around in search of something else. Mrs Phelps, who had been watching her with fascination for the past few weeks, now got up from her desk and went over to her. Can I help you, Matilda? she asked. Mm, I'm wondering what to read next, Matilda said. I finished all your children's books. You mean you've looked at the pictures? Yeah, but I've read the books as well. Mrs Phelps looked down at Matilda, right from her great height, and Matilda looked right back up at her. I actually thought some of them were very poor, Matilda said, but... Others of them were lovely. I liked the secret garden best of all. It was full of mystery. The mystery of the room behind... Oops, sorry, little bit last. The room behind the closed door and the mystery of the garden behind the big wall. Mrs Phelps was stunned. Exactly how old are you, Matilda? She asked. Four years and three months, Matilda said. Mrs Phelps was more stunned than ever, but she had the sense not to show it. What sort of a book would you like to read next, she asked. Matilda said, I'd like a really good one that grown-ups read. A famous one. I'm not sure that I know any of their names. Mrs Phelps looked along the shelves, taking, out her, her, taking her time. She didn't quite know what to bring out. How, she asked herself, does one choose a famous grown-up book for a four-year-old girl? Her first thought was to pick a teenager's romance of the sort of kind that's written for 15-year-old girls but for some reason she found herself instinctively walking past that particular shelf. Try this, she said at long last. It's very famous and it's very good. If it's too long for you, just let me know and I'll find something shorter and a little bit easier. Great Expectations, Matilda read, by Charles Dickens. I'd love to try it. I must be mad, Mrs Phelps told herself. But to Matilda, she said, of course you can try it. Over the next few afternoons, Mrs Phelps could hardly take her eyes from the small girl sitting hour after hour in the big armchair at the far end of the room with the book on her lap. It was necessary to rest it on her lap because it was far too heavy for her to hold up, which meant that she had to sit leaning forward in order to read it. And a strange sight it was, this tiny dark-haired person sitting there with her feet nowhere near touching the floor, totally absorbed in the wonderful adventures of Pip and old Mrs Havisham and her cobwebbed house and by the spell of magic that Dickens, the great storyteller, had woven with his words. The only movement from the reader was the lifting of her hand every now and then to turn over a page. And Mrs Phelps felt sad when the time came for her to clock across the floor and say, It's ten to five, Matilda. Your question for today is why on earth did Mrs Phelps say to Matilda, just here, you mean you've looked at the pictures?